Okay, I think we are live now. And it's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Medea Benjamin from Code Pink. And we are having a conversation with Simone Chun, who just returned from South Korea and is going to give us an update on the situation on the peninsula and with US relations. Good evening, Simone. Hey, how are you? Great, good to be with you. Oh, nice to be back. So there's a lot to talk about, and perhaps we should start out with the um, coincidence that mm -hmm. just before the North and South begin their third round of talks tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, the US uh, via Nikki Haley at the UN called the meeting of the Security Council to talk about Russian violations and other uh, violations of the sanctions on North Korea. So could you talk a little bit about the backdrop for the North-South meetings tomorrow? Um, first, I want to say that, you know, it is just an extraordinary, or not extraordinary, uh, historic moment that uh, uh, you and I, and um, uh, also all of us who are following uh, Korean peace process are witnessing. Um, so uh, to Korea is having the third uh, in uh, uh, Inter-Korean summit this year. Uh, as a President Moon Jae-in tweeted uh, uh, several hours ago, uh, this is what he said. He said that, um, you know, this is truly a historic moment. Uh, within just five months, we have, we're having third three summit. And, uh, and also, if you look at the kind of uh, preparations, uh, more uh, excitement that Koreans have, which you don't really see in the US media. And as you pointed out, uh, I mean, what a coincidence and also very uh, shame on, I would say, Nikki Haley, you know, on the day that the two Koreans are having another major summit, they have to call, call the urgent UN Security Council meeting on the uh, violation, alleged violation of a sanction by, in this case, they were pointing finger at Russia. So there's uh, the point which sees that again, there's a, such a huge gap between uh, what Koreans see, right? Both Koreas see the peace process and the US uh, security elite and also the US mainstream media sees the peace process. So. Um, as you just pointed out, I just returned from my visit to Korea. And uh, I mean, you will really have to see Koreans, uh, again, this approval support for the inter-Korean process is, is very strong. And uh, for this summit uh, we are having this week, the Korean government came up with the um, uh, uh, new slogan that is said, peace, a new future. So they also have a new English website for this uh, two, uh, two, three day summit. Um, and uh, they are having the delegation involves about 200 uh, members. These so are first, people coming from South Korea too. From South Korea. So we have a 200 member delegation. Uh, wow. Official delegations are 14, including President Moon and all his cabinet members, all major party leaders, even President Moon included the, um, the leaders of a two labor fe federation, right? And there's artists, there are writers. Basically, this is a, it's sort of a reflect the consensus, right? And um, um, before you go further, uh, Simone, have all three of these summits always been in the North? No, all three, this mid, uh, summit, as you know, this year, the summit has been, we were in the, uh, as you know, Pamundam, right? And, uh, and also the border. Uh -huh, border. And the, so in a way, your question your, uh, is good because this will be the first time that the summit is being held actually in Pyongyang, North Korea. Oh. And the president is, they're taking, uh, you know, they're going to Pyongyang by, uh, by plane. And, it's, you know, it's only one hour, you know, flight. And uh, um, and as I pointed out, and this is the uh, present uh, Moon is trying to really show, include as 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 a you know broad, broad um, uh, a member of a population possible, and and I will read some of the uh, statement that made by people who are participating in the uh, delegation. Uh, Moon Jae In, President's special advisor to President Moon, and he said that he's you know he's very clear. He said inter-Korean relationship cannot be a byproduct of a U.S. North Korean relationship, 
So what it means that whenever he argued that whenever maybe there are some problem with the US North Korean uh, negotiations, uh, the Professor Moon Jong-in argued that you know he, he, he South Korea should serve as sort of a negotiator. Um, there's a mayor of Park, mayor of Seoul, Seoul, he says, I'm very happy to be able to accompany the historic inter-Korean summit. Uh, a former, the former unification minister, Jung Se-young, he says that the upcoming inter-Korean summit will be, in his view, be followed by ending the Korean War and a peaceful, unified uh, uh, regime. So, but at the same time, he also alerted said that there's going to be massive, very strong opposition against this path. So people who, you know, prefer the status quo. So he was arguing that we should not, people should not be swayed by, you know, those opposition. Um, Is he talking about opposition within opposition South to, Korea yeah. or mm -hmm. from the U.S. or what? I think he was referring to both very right wing still, you know, there's various sort of in, in, uh, in, uh, established interest within South Korea who who has been basically sustained by the you know, divided Korea and also you know, in, in the opposition within in from the United States. Um, again, going back to this, uh, this uh, special, very exciting delegation, we have also included, uh, this will be very interesting to our um, uh, young uh, activists. Uh, President Moon included uh, two uh, youth members. One is uh, a junior high school uh, female student. So wow. she was chosen. Yeah, she was, uh, this girl was chosen because she wrote a personal letter to President Moon saying that how she was so uh, moved by her grandfather's, right? Her grandfather's meeting his brother uh, in North Korea during the last of a reunion. Oh, so how sweet. Was, yeah, and then he looked at his grandfather. Oh my God, they brought, they, you know, they, they were obviously their brothers, they, you know, and she said, she wrote the, this personal letter to President Moon and he says, you know, I really would like to um, devote, you know, contribute for the reunification and and she want to be a um, uh, 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 pediatrician so that she can later to take care of kids in North Korea who are right now oh. suffering from. And, and also there's another uh, president also chose this uh, um, 20 year old um, female student from Sungmyon Women's College and she has been you know, she has been volunteering to covering the last summit through her um, mobile phone, right? She became very popular. And she said she was, she's a, a Chinese uh, studies major. So she also would like to, so basically she wants to be sort of a, you know, tell the youth, pop, you know, young people in Korea, you know, who's maybe right not, not so much sort of because their own personal, you know, uh, economic difficulties, et cetera, they're not, not be so, interested in this unification issue, but she, as a young generation, she would like to appeal to that. But anyway, to go back to the, uh, to the story of the, today's this, this historic moment, and um, two Koreas, uh, as far as I can tell you, which again, I don't hear much about US media, we are so excited, we're so energized, we're so determined, and as you and I you know, saw, you remember, it's peace trade, right? that has left us a, a few months ago and still we feel that it is uh, on track. So, uh, so, but still that's why, as I pointed out, as you pointed out in the very beginning, it is such disappointment that, you know, uh, Nikki Haley come out with this sort of urgent meeting on the day that South Korea is celebrating and trying to get things uh, moving. Well, it's also very confusing because Nikki Haley represents Donald Trump and Donald Trump wants the peace process to go forward. Exactly. So how do you see uh, the, uh, the nuances or even disagreements internally in the administration? What is going on that Nikki Haley would try to throw a monkey wrench in the process right before the two Koreas get together? It, you know, that is still, for me, it's hard to speculate what is the internal dynamics, but they may justify saying that, well, you know, we're playing, you know, good cop and bad cop. You know, Trump always says, between Trump and Chairman Kim, they always sort of try to, you know, publicly these days, unlike last year, uh, try to praise each other, you know, they still have good chemistry, etc. but uh, Nikki Haley probably might she think that, well, you know, I'm so tough, you know, I'm a bad cop, so sanctions work, you know, we should have maximum pressure. Maybe they're, that's what their justification, but to me, I find it a little bit interesting that 
they are really going after not so much North Korea. Have you seen that, right? They're going mm -hmm. after China and Russia. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems to me that there are many, it's also it seems to be there's sort of an ongoing this sort of conflict uh, problem with the, between Russia and China, Russia and United States relations and Russia, China, China, United States relations. And uh, uh, with even the China and US China, uh, this all the trade uh, dispute. And some uh, analysts are arguing that, you know, China is basically, uh, China is, you know, using North Korea uh, as a try to kind of get some leverage in this US-China trade dispute, but that's a little bit going in tandem. But still, I think that uh, um, it seems to me that to me, it's the, the fact the United States is going after more Russia and China shows that a uh, broadly sanctions not really working, right? Not effective. Um, and, uh, and also, you know, Putin, as you recall, he, you know, clearly he said that he, he, does, he, he doesn't support sanction. He thinks it's ineffective. So we know that Russia does not really believe in, right, in the utility of a sanction. Although and they China didn't pass just, them at the Security Council, they didn't mm -hmm. agree to them. Yeah, so their point that they still, I think is probably their point of still is that still, although they're part of a member of a Security Council, still they think probably think the Security Council more, effect, you know, influenced by the United States. And, well, uh, yes, and they also probably say that since Donald Trump is on uh, a track of diplomacy, mm -hmm. why should there be these draconian sanctions that mm -hmm. are hurting the ordinary North Korean people? Mm -hmm. And going back to the summit that's happening star starting tomorrow or in a mm -hmm. few hours in Korea time, yeah. um, let's talk about some of the concrete things that are happening or that we might be able to see out of that summit. And uh, isn't North Korea and South Korea, aren't they anxious for more trade relations, but isn't this uh, hampered by the sanctions that don't allow such trade? Mm -hmm. And specifically, um, before you know, I answered that, address that question. We should also point out two important things. One, again, uh, you know, people com compare the you know current uh, the, the, the the summit with the previous one, but it's a very difficult. Even the summit taking place today is very different from all the other summit because we are under the harshest you know economic sanctions, right? And uh, um, and secondly, about the uh, it's very particular about this the importance of this third summit is that looks like um, there's a good chance really uh, Chairman Kim and President Moon might discuss more in detail about denuclearization plan, denuclearization process. Now I'm saying this because in the past. The position of South Korea has been that the denuclearization talk between is just between U.S. and uh, North Korea, right? And so we are going to only you know focus on inter-Korean relationship. So that has been the more sort of official position of South Korea. But reports that I'm reading is that this time President Moon looks like it's going to be really actually address that or get more have, to have more uh, uh, substantive discussion with the chairman Kim about the nuclearization process. And that's because he wants to make sure that the US North Korea talks keep going forward. Exactly. So he would like to stepping stone, right? Um, so what this so so it's still so we are really probably will see more concrete timetable from, uh, uh, from Chairman Kim. Uh, we may even be surprised maybe by some more uh, uh, greater concessions or commitment from North Korea. Um, and I also feel that, I mean, this is without giving any uh, evidence or proof, uh, we may already see there has been already agreement between uh, uh, to Korea's and also maybe has been already uh, uh, discussed by the, at least from President Trump. So this is just my own guessing. So I think that I'm pretty positive about maybe 60, 70%. I think there will be 
some substantive uh, uh, result specifically about denuclearization uh, process. Um, yeah, go ahead. But, I, but this issue of denuclearization is not the number one issue for South Korea, and exactly. obviously it's not for North. A mm -hmm. peace treaty is more important for them. Mm -hmm. So where do we stand on that uh, that uh, chicken and egg thing of what comes first, the peace treaty or denuclearization? Has there been any movement on that? Yeah. So as you recall, the I said in the you know right now, if you look, if you ask me, what is the the status of uh, U.S. TPA North Korea negotiation? Uh, the answer it, it, it has been stalled. You recall the, the cancellation of Pompeii's visit to Pyongyang a few weeks ago, right? That was uh, what I what I heard was specifically because North Korea was demanding, you know, the uh, first improving U U.S. TPK relationship, uh, specifically ending hostility, to, and to be more specifically, you know, the signing that the uh, uh, political declaration, right, to end the Korean War, which United States for from United States. We all know denuclear, complete denuclearization first, and then as a reward, we'll lift economic sanctions. We will, you know, and then maybe eventually it's peace treaty. So those are the two, and the, so uh, and 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 still, I think so if you look at it though about the the signing the political declaration and the Korean War, there is a good chance. Because, first of all, both Koreas agree. A, and a support that agree that the, the declaration. In fact, President Moon says that this is going to be the goal before the, the, the peace declaration. Uh, yeah, he said in, oh. before the, uh, the, 2000, the end of 2018, he's going to sign it. Um, it looks like the reports also suggest China also is supporting the uh, ending Korean War that, you know, um, declaration. And uh, so if that is so at this point, and then uh, the North Korea come up with a more very uh, um, uh, proactive uh, commitment, specifically timetable, giving timetable for denuclearization, and also willing to provide the list of their nuclear uh, programs, facilities. Um, and as you know that we got, they're going to, there's the UN general meeting is taking, will take in place soon. So at that point, uh, you know, I, President Moon, I think there's already bilateral the, a summit between uh, President Moon and President Trump is already scheduled. And uh, President Moon, it, it, but is uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un going to the UN meeting? That we not, we're not sure. So I think this may be another sort of a, a surprise. Uh, at the end of this summit, uh, maybe we'll hear that, uh, you know, uh, Chairman Kim may, you know, news about Chairman Kim's coming to, uh, uh, attend the general assembly meeting, but which I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure it's going to happen, but still we will, we'll know more about it. But going back to your question about the, um, the, uh, you know, the, uh, anticipating the summit result, uh, the bottom line is probably we'll definitely hear more uh, uh, substantive discussion about the denuclearization process. And uh, has there been any new motions about, uh, well, only uh, about more of the U.S. remains being sent back. Last I heard, it was only 50. Uh, and what about the reunification? How many families? And is that continuing? And things like the Kaesong Economic Zone. Any any updates on those things? Those things, I think those are, um, I think they're going to, they definitely going to probably discuss more about that. And about the, the most important, the interesting thing about is a, a reopening of a Kaesong Industrial Park. As you know, the Korea, two Korea just uh, opened the uh, uh, liaison office, right, in Kaesong, which is also very exciting news. You know, this is the first time that South Korea has a, a, a permanent sort of a, a liaison office in, in North Korea. And uh, uh, so, you see the headlines that 24 hours, 365 days, now two Koreas are gonna communicate before we just, you, know, you can use the bullhorn or, or, or you communicate through North Korea shooting, you know, uh, uh, missiles or uh, anyway. Um, so this is very significant. And it was so exciting too. There was, uh, you know, you saw this, uh, obviously, you know, all these people, uh, leaders from both Korea's they're attending and I was reading the what the, uh, the 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 statement from one of the National Assembly member from Korea he says my heart's beating with excitement and this is the first time South Korea opened a permanent office on North Korean soil and and 
And, and also, what, what, another thing we should also point out is, again, this is, you know, to Korea, you remember, they hold the um, uh, um, military talks. And really, they have done a lot of, uh, you know, agreed a lot of measures to uh, ease the tension between and between two Koreas. And for instance, they, if you look at the report, uh, two Korea agrees some military de-escalation measures, including a plan to demilitarize the joint security area and continuing joint recovery operation of a war dead in D DMZ, uh, where you, you and I have been. Um, and also the, uh, uh, about the, the U.S. remained uh, uh, repatriation of the uh, 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 MI uh, U.S. soldiers missing in action. They still, I think, they're uh, on uh, on a track. And but problem here is again the stalled U.S. Uh, North Korean relationship has sort of a uh, you know has stopped some of these uh, uh, talks. And well, the, the the talk in the U.S. side is that. North Korea is violating the spirit because there's not an agreement really to mm -hmm. violate uh, by continuing with its nuclear activities and that it hasn't done anything uh, to hand in even the basic information about its nuclear program uh, and that the Trump administration has uh, given in concessions and North Korea hasn't. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as I know, the only concession the U.S. has given is to temporarily halt the military exercises that the U.S. does with South Korea. Is there something that I'm missing here? No, you're not missing. Actually, you know, the President Moon act, he even pointed out in the uh, meeting that he had with the so elders, advisors, and actually, I even I kind of a little bit surprised to to you know to read the President Moon's statement. He said, he said that North Korea has done in his mind at least four irreversible uh, uh, steps towards denuclearization. You know, the, demolishing the facility that used for all of their nuclear six nuclear uh, tests. Right, it's gone forever. Uh, and also dem demolishing that uh, building at the Sohe satellite uh, launch station, right? Which basically means that North Korea is saying that we no longer can you know, threaten the United States without ICBM. So it's permanent irreversible measures, etc. And whereas, uh, this is again President Moon, he says uh, the United States has done only one, that is suspending the war game, right? So, um, so what he's again, he's, so you are right. The United States has not really, really has done only really one thing. And it seems to me, you know, it's like, so Kim Jong-un even, President Chairman Kim also sort of expressed the discontent. He thought that as far as he concerned, he has been really, you know, really he did the best to at least uh, uh, implement the respect the, the Singapore summit. So, when the President Moon's special envoy to, uh, to North Korea uh, a few, uh, two weeks ago, apparently Chairman Kim said, you know, like, you know, well, how come the world is not so impressed by all the, you know, things that I have done? And uh, so I think that's from North Korea's point of view. So I think a lot of, I think probably some of us share this concern as well, including President Moon. So we're here is the reciprocity. And, and for, I think it's time you know, we have been saying for all this time, it's really time for the United States to give something, to show commitment. You know, Singapore, as you recall, the Singapore uh, agree, summit agreement, right? The very first thing was what? The, uh, improve the U.S.-North Korean relationship, right? And denuclearization was the third, not the first, right? So as far as the North Korea concerned, so that's what he's, it is doing, right? The, the confidence building, right? Has no, all these measures. This um, suggestion from uh, Chairman Kim that he meet with Trump again, uh, has there been any movement on that? And do you think there will be a meeting before the November elections? Um, I think there is a good chance that there will be another meeting. Um, and then if that, uh, I think this all again depends on, in my view, uh, how well this, uh, this third inter-Korean summit goes. And, so if there's uh, progress on the denuclearization issue between mm -hmm. the two Koreas, that might 
pave the way for another summit. With exactly. Trump. You see, that has been the pattern. Do you remember last time when the, the first the Singapore, right before, right? The uh, Singapore summit was sort of, was almost about to be canceled. You remember you and I were in Seoul, right? Oh my God, we were, it was like really, we were so disappointed. And I really, at the time when I heard the news, uh, when Trump was, uh, you know, was threatening to cancel the summit, I was 99%, I was sure, oh my God, this is gone. This, this is not going to, I felt, I, I felt devastated. And uh, uh, so at the time, remember, while we were at the, you know, we were protesting and apparently the, the, the second inter summit was halt. We didn't even know, right? And so I think what I'm trying to say is that still the pattern here, the, the very, very new uh, pattern about the uh, this current peace process is that again, South Korea is not in the backseat, right? South Korea, especially President Moon, has been really driving force of this current peace process. North Korea may not, you know, trust United States. United States may not trust what North Korea, but both my, I think they kind of trust President Moon. And President Moon has, uh, you know, cultivated. I think he he created. I think he created this credi credibility. So, so that's how uh, one country that has been uh, very negative about this whole process has been Japan, and yet recently we heard that uh, the Japanese President Abe was interested in meeting with uh, the North Korean chairman. And what did you make of that? And do you think that might happen? Is that a good development? I hope so. I, you know, cross my fingers. I pray. Um, I think one thing, you know, Japan, as you know, Japan, uh, South Korea has a very long uh, relation. Not all of them are very, you know, good one, happy one. And uh, um, I think Abe's position is that, as he can see that, the, as we said, peace train is already leaving, and also kind of, you know, Japan doesn't want to be left out, right? And I think that's that's the what uh, my first intake. But on the other hand, we should really um, really think about how Japan, the big con big picture. That is, Japan has been really under Abe writing policy. He has really restoring this all the sort of uh, uh, militaristic you know uh, sort of a policy, right? So I will be somewhat you know cautious about uh, sudden sort of a uh, uh, gesture of, from Abe. And, but still, it's a good thing that, you know, they should meet. Uh -huh. So in the remaining minutes we have, um, perhaps you could give people ideas of what they could do, including uh, connecting with Women Cross the DMZ and how can they learn more about that initiative? Yes, there is a, a one, uh, we, um, our, South Korean uh, civic organization delegation is coming to uh, actually to attend the UN general uh, uh, meeting uh, specifically to promote uh, signing the end, ending Korean war declaration. Uh, so there's a petition going and I hope that I would happy to share the link with the, in the Facebook. I hope that people can sign on. Um, another thing is really, you know, I, I cannot emphasize uh, strongly enough and we really counting on uh, really ordinary Americans' voice, support, and, and, and especially, you know, with the elections coming, right? And I hope that uh, um, this election, November election, I hope that uh, people, you know, have more interest in the uh, Korean peace process. And uh, this peace process was, uh, you know, happening specifically because of Korea's candlelight revolution that really cha completely transformed the, uh, uh, the politics and ended the, uh, the authoritarian uh, uh, regime. And so in the election, I hope that uh, we, you know, your contact your local senators and the candidates, the members of uh, 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 Congress and tell them that, you know, end the Korean war and economic sanctions Sanctions are not uh, 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 tools of diplomacy. Sanctions kill innocent children and the most vulnerable people in North Korea doesn't benefit anybody. And uh, lastly, also, uh, we really wanted to, um, you know, really uh, that even if you don't like President Trump, 
Um, please, you know, we love peace, right? More than we dislike, as you, you know, once said, we dislike uh, Donald Trump. And uh, we need, Koreans need, you know, all, all the support that we can. And this is, is very, very, I would say, in fact, the most important, uh, I would say, time period in the history of the peace process in on, on the Korean Peninsula. We need this literally between now and um, November. I think that we can make a huge difference. And if people want to learn more about women cross the DMZ, where do they go? Yeah, we will. I will link to the. Uh, uh, I'll be happy to. Uh, include the link to the Women Cross DMZ and also our um, other petition about the assigning the uh, ending Korean War Declaration. And why don't I include that in the, I will, you know, put in the Facebook. Wonderful. And you can go to womencrossdmz.org. Mm -hmm. And um, Simone, thank you so much for giving us a wonderful update on the situation. People watching should look out what the results are of the North-South Summit that will be going on for the next three days and will be very critical in terms of not only the relations of the North and South, but uh, whether the peace process with the US will move forward. So thank you so much for the great update and we look forward to future webinars with you. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Come on. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.